again what we did before was not a rotating magnetic field. We have the magnetic field pointing up, B0, external magnetic field. And then we have another magnetic field, B1 cosine omega 1t. Right? So this is pointing in the x direction. But it's just that it is oscillating, right? At t equals zero, it is maximum in the positive x direction. And then gradually it becomes zero and then point in the negative x direction, just going back and forth, right? This is the strength. So the total magnetic field, of course, is equal to this. It's a vector. We have the B0 times Z hat and then the B1 cosine omega 1t times x hat, right? Is this okay? Now with this, then we use our Hamiltonian, right? Our Hamiltonian is that for this magnetic field, uh, for this uh, for a spin under this external magnetic field, the Hamiltonian is negative mu dot b, where mu is the spin magnetic moment, right? And what is spin magnetic moment? It is equals to the gyro magnetic ratio times the spin uh, vector, right? And do you still remember what is spin vector? Right, it is excellent. X uh, h bar over two times the sigma, the poly vector, right? Where we we just uh, it, it doesn't uh, it's not a waste of time if we can keep doing this, right? It is just equal to sigma x x hat sigma plus sigma y y hat plus sigma z z hat right you can see there is a three-dimensional real space looks like real space vector but it's not real space because the coefficient a matrix okay instead of real numbers so if you know this then it is easy dot product with the b b is x hat plus uh, z hat right so you do the dot product of course the x and z will be gone and then you just have the inner product and here I make the gamma equal to E divided by M, right? So it's a good uh, reminder that gamma is actually G divided by 2, uh, E divided by M for the, uh, yeah, in, in general, right? So, but however, G in this case, it is almost 2, right? So that's why, which is negative 2 actually, G is about negative 2. So that's why I get E divided by M. And you just told me this is h divided by 2, right? So then we have this uh, result. And the main point is that this total Hamiltonian is equal to a basic Hamiltonian, which is uh, has a large B0 with some small perturbation, okay? We assume B1 is very small. This is the main part of this uh, uh, exercise, right? Uh, you need to understand that we assume B is much, B1 is much smaller than B0. So as a result, because it's a perturbation, then we say that the general solution is a linear combination of the eigenstate of the original Hamiltonian, which only have the B pointing up. And this one, we know it very well because this is just the precession if you only have the magnetic field pointing up, right? So these are the possible two solutions. Now, omega L, what is omega L? That's the Lamor frequency, right? And, uh, and that, uh, from there, uh, it is related to the splitting of the uh, magnetic field. Uh, let's just remind one, ourselves one more time, right? If we're only talking about this uh, B0, this total splitting is equal to 2 mu B0, right? Uh, and uh, this mu, I, I just call it ball magnetron, 2 mu b, right? <coughs> so uh, we can assume, uh, or just the angular momentum. I assume this is this, uh, very similar, right? And then uh, from here, you will get the omega l, okay? Which is the normal precession frequency. More generally, it is equal to the gamma times b0. Okay, the, the gyro magnetic ratio. But of course, this gamma, we say that it is just E divided by MB0, right? This is approximately equal to E divided by Gamma is approximately equals to E divided by M, right? Because G is 2. Uh, and I forgot this is negative, of course, right? This is negative. But, but we only look at the positive magnitude, right? So that's how you get the number of frequency. 
And of course, if you try to understand from the eigen energy perspective, this is still correct also because uh, uh, because this part uh, is not only mu b zero, so it's omega divided by two for uh, the lower state, and then for the higher states, it's omega l divided by two. So they are all related, and you can try to uh, understand better. Okay, any questions? The Schrodinger equation, right? We apply the eigen. That is the eigen value. The, the, that is the e to the power negative i e zero divided h bar t, right? And this is e to the power negative i e one divided by h bar t. Exactly what you said. Yeah. This is just a coefficient, right? So we say that this one equal to this term times C0 plus this term times C1. So it's a linear combination, right? And then our goal is to find what is C0, okay? So what did we do? We do an outer product. I did not show the details, right? And eventually we come up with a differential equation of this form. And then we use so-called rotating wave approximation we say that uh, here I did not show it, but we know that if you try to expand cosine omega 1 into exponent, exponential um, i omega 1 plus exponential negative i omega 1 divided by 2, then you will get two terms. Right. So in the assignment, you are asked to repeat this for the y axis. So, uh, so you will understand better at that point, right? So what is cosine? exponential i omega 1t plus exponential negative i omega 1t divided by 2. This is cosine omega 1t, right? Remember, right? If not, try to check it. And then you multiply by this one. Then I get a term that is omega 1 minus omega l. Another term is omega 1 plus omega l, right? So for omega 1 plus omega l, it is very fast. For omega 1 minus omega L, if I set omega 1 equal to omega L, it becomes zero, right? So I can ignore the very fast term. Again, it is just like I feeling, uh, it's it just rotating around me, that the field, I, I just have a net zero feeling, right? You pull me to the left and right so fast, it just looks like no one is pulling me, okay? So then we come up with this simplified equation and do substitution, we find that this is a second order differential equation. And its solution must be a cosine omega r dash, right, uh, plus i sine b sine omega r dash. And then we solve it. So this are only math. If you do it one time, it will be good, right? And then we come up with this final solution. So basically what we say is, hey, you compare to a general state or the initial state. The initial state is what? Cosine omega divided, theta divided by 2 e to the power negative i phi divided by 2, 0, plus sine theta divided by 2, e to the power i phi divided by 2, 1, right? This was the general state, remember this? Because we say this is actually just representing alpha plus beta, right? Yeah? And then we have the normalization condition, and we have the, we ignore ignore the global phase, so as a result, we only have theta and phi. Of course, in this particular case, phi equal to negative pi divided by two, right? So you see what's the difference? Well, in terms of theta, both of them add omega r. In terms of phi, both of them add omega lt, right? So you just think that it is rotating about, uh, or we can look at here, the state has the theta keep changing, just going down. And at the same time, it has the phi keep changing. But this phi is going really fast. So it is like precessing and then going to the south pole and then go to the north pole if you keep applying the pulse. Now that, that's the beauty of the uh, derivation. Okay, any questions? So go home to do the assignment. I hope that uh, I say I asked you to use latest. Who, who have not used latest before? Um, it should not be too, it's good to, good, a good training, right? So try it and it will be easy for you to uh, fix it if you make any mistake. 
Uh, if you really spend after a few hours, still cannot do it well. I mean, one hour, too much frustration. Let me know. Maybe I'll say no need to use latest. But I do want you to go through this training, okay? Yeah, it can be frustrating. But once you do it, actually save you a lot of time, okay? Good. So let's go back to the new topic. This is from the last week slide, right? So.